tell you, I don't. There ain't no better time to preach than right now. And I've, I've thought this week has it's been a hard week. Went back to work this week, uh, and I, I tell you, I've been in a lot of pain. Uh, been and come home from work and work around the house. Time I get done, I'd be so, I'd be hurting so bad. I'd get about an hour and a half, two hours sleep every night. And I got home from work today. I said that to say this, and I was just so tired uh, that uh, the devil tried to tell me you don't feel like going. The devil tried to tell me to just stay home. Uh, but I tell you, I've got to have fellowship with my brothers and sisters. And I've got to have that this kind of fellowship with my Lord and my Savior. And I tell you, since uh, I started, I started down the road coming this way, every mile I felt a little better. Every mile I got rested a little more. And I'm thankful. That's what the power of God can do. And I, I'll tell you, we've not run and shouted and hooped and hollered tonight. And it ain't poured out like that. But there's just a, a good, sweet, uh, comforting, uh, supporting spirit here tonight. And I appreciate that. It ain't every time you feel that. Uh, but I'm thankful for what I feel in my heart tonight. But tonight, in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 4, this came on my heart last night. Uh, been on my heart all day today and all evening this evening and Vernon just quoted some of it and I, I'll tell you the Lord knows what he's doing though. I don't know nothing now I, I come in honestly I come in I want to turn wheel loose and uh, the Lord uh, uh, wouldn't let me get away from this tonight uh, but Lord willing I'm going to get him back here next Thursday night if you can I want you to come preach for us next Thursday night but Ephesians chapter number 4, and we'll start reading at verse number 17 and read down several verses tonight. It reads like this. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk, not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being pious, uh, feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness and greediness but ye have not so learned Christ if so be that ye have heard him and have taught by him have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus as the truth is in Jesus let's go, get that in our heart tonight as the truth is in Jesus and then he said that ye put off uh, concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt and according, according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Uh, wherefore, putting away lying, uh, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, uh, for we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole... Uh, still no more, but rather uh, let him labor, uh, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to them that, ha that need it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, uh, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You can be seated. That's not reading more tonight than I could ever attempt to even go through and preach out. But I, I tell you, this is what the Lord uh, has laid on our heart. We begin to study this tonight and we look... Uh, and we know this is Paul, and he's writing to the church at Ephesus. Uh, and, and I tell you, I love this letter. I, I love everything about uh, this letter to the church and how that uh, Paul is encouraging them and how he keeps encouraging them. And then uh, we read over, and I read not long ago in Timothy, how that 
uh, this young preacher was special to Paul and how that he encouraged him. Uh, this is the church that Timothy pastored when you study history. Uh, that's what we're reading tonight to this same church that uh, this pastor was at. Uh, Paul reached, reached out to him and wrote this letter while he was in prison. But he began to talk to him. And I studied this and I began to look and I thought, uh, Brother, I'm so glad tonight that I'm not what I used to be. I'm so glad tonight I'm not the man that I used to be. I'm not the man I was uh, 30 years ago. I'm not the man I was uh, 10 years ago. I'm not the man I was uh, two years ago. I'm a new preacher tonight in Christ Jesus. I, I tell you, these folks uh, that will look back at me and they'll remember me from years past and they'll all they'll see is what I was. All they'll see is a drunk. All they'll see is a dopehead. All they'll see is a whoremonger. But I'm thankful today. Uh, somebody said one time, Jesus changed me. I'm glad that Jesus didn't just change me. Uh, he made me a new preacher. And that's what he began uh, to talk to him here about just a little bit. Uh, putting off that old man, doing away uh, with what we used to have. Now, I tell you now, as we begin to look into this and study this for just a little while, uh, uh, Paul tells them and is teaching them here that, uh, and I know I'm one of these preachers I believe in uh, with everything in my heart. I believe that when you're saved, you're saved and you're sealed to the day of redemption. I'm thankful uh, when Jesus saved me, he done it right at the very first time. Uh, but we can get it ourselves and we can uh, go back and we can pick up those things if we won't do it. If we're drawn away of our own lust and enticed, we'll do that if we're not very careful. But Paul said, he said that when we do that, he said if I build again the things that I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. And we know that the scripture says that the ways of a transgressor is hard. I mean, he begins to look here and he, he begins to tell it now. Uh, he said, This I say that uh, therefore and testify the Lord that ye henceforth uh, forth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind or in their mind today. Uh, brother, I'll tell you what, I, I looked at that and I begin to think uh, brother, we're not supposed to be like this world. Yeah. And that's why he's referencing that the Gentile uh, world right here as we're, as we're reading. Uh, that was considered the lost people. That was considered uh, the dogs at one time in, in scripture here. But he said, we're not to be like them. I'm not a bit better than anybody out there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a bit better than the one that's got a needle in their arm right now. I'm not a bit better than, than anybody out there tonight. I mean, I'm different than they are. And that's what he's telling us there. He said, walk not. Uh, he said, therefore I say that and testify the Lord that you henceforth uh, walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Having the, their, their understanding that are uh, being alienated from the life of God uh, through the ignorance uh, through the ignorance that is in them and the cause of the blind uh, of their heart and then I want to jump down to verse number 20 there and he said but ye have not so learned uh, that Christ we, in other words brother uh, that's not what God's teaching us that's what uh, that's not what the Lord's teaching us uh, but we continue to read on I'll get where I'm going in just a minute uh, with the help of the Lord but he said that uh, in verse number 22 he said that you put out uh, concerning the former conversation of the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful love. Uh, uh, this old man uh, that I've still got the same play. I've still got. I still walk the same. I still talk the same. And I still look the same. I get uh, just a little older. But I'm not the same anymore. And he said we've got to put away that old man. Uh, people might look at you the way they did uh, in times past. They may uh, try to compare you to the way they did uh, two or three years and all. But he said that didn't come uh, from God. We've got to put away that old man. And what preacher, how do we do that? How do we put away the old man? He said it be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Uh, Romans chapter 12. He, he teaches us in verse 1 and 2. He teaches us to be not conformed to this world. Uh, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, so I believe tonight that our mind has got a lot to do with this. Jesus saved my heart. Uh, so Jesus, uh, uh, the blood of Christ. Just talking about that a while ago. I've had people that tell me don't preach that slaughterhouse of religion to me. But I'm telling you, that slaughterhouse 
Calvary's religion is what saved me from my devil's hell. And the blood that flowed from Calvary's tree is what saved me. And that's what's going to take me to sweet Beulah land uh, one day after a while, brother. I'll tell you. And so he saved my soul. And then as long as we're in this flesh, we're going to contend with this plan. Yeah. And brother, we've got to renew our mind. And that's why he said to set no evil thing before you. And brother, you begin to start what? And I'll just put it like this tonight. Uh, you listen to worldly music. Uh, before you know it, it's going to come out of you. Yeah. And when it goes in here, it's going to settle down your heart. And then it'll start coming out your mouth. Uh, you watch old filth on the computer and TV. And that's what's going to come out of your life uh, before long. So brother, we've got to do that. Uh, renew our mind. Uh, brother, don't, don't be transformed uh, conformed to this world. Uh, but transformed by the renewing of our mind. And brother, we go on now. And he said and that you put on the new man. I'm thankful, brother, we don't have to be the same old. The same old. We are a new creature in Christ Jesus today. And brother, he said, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, uh, putting away lie. And uh, listen just for a few minutes now. Uh, these are things that we've got to put away from us. And I know people like this, and you do too. Uh, but we've got to do away with these things. And, uh, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. He said, wherefore, putting away lying, uh, speaking every man truth. I know people uh, that's sitting in church every single time the doors are open. Uh, they'd rather climb a light pole and tell a lie than uh, stand on the ground and tell the truth. And I'll tell you that uh, there's no good in that today. And he said, now, uh, brother, he said, speak every man truth with his neighbor, uh, for we are members of one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Uh, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Why, preacher? Because uh, when we do that, uh, we open ourselves up and we give place uh, to the devil. I don't know, I'll tell you tonight, uh, brother, the devil's duty and his job uh, tonight is to try to hinder you. He's to try to get you sidetracked. A sidetrack tonight. I, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt. He can't get my soul, but he can keep me uh, from doing the work of God. He can keep me uh, from reaching somebody else. Uh, so we don't need to give place to the devil tonight. And then I'm going to turn over here at a verse number 29. And I'm going to finish this out. And I, I promise you I'm getting some more with all this tonight. He said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying. Uh, that it may minister grace unto the hearer and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. And I want to focus on that for just a few minutes tonight. And now as I say it, and this scripture says right here, uh, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. If you're saved by God's grace, you're saved. Uh, you're saved and you're sealed to that day of redemption. Uh, brother and I, I'll tell you, there's been time uh, that I've not been able to feel that Spirit of God. Uh, there's been times that, brother, I have grieved that Holy Holy Spirit. Uh, so what does that mean for you to greet it? And I thought about this all day today and I thought about it last night. Uh, when I'm grieved brother I'm hurt. Uh, when I'm grieved I'm sad. Uh, when I'm grieved I'm disheartened tonight. And brother I'll tell you some of these things that I'm about to preach on. Uh, this right here uh, will hurt the Holy Spirit of God. It will hinder uh, the Holy Spirit of God working in your life and working in my life. I want to be a soul winner for Jesus. I say to here uh, not long ago. Every word uh, that I could, that comes out of my mouth, I want it to be dripping uh, with the Holy Ghost of God. Yeah. Every time I strum, uh, strum this guitar, I want the Holy Ghost of God in that tonight. But now, uh, there's things that I can do and there's things that you can do that hurts the Spirit of God. That hinders the Spirit of God tonight. And he said, and grieve not of the Holy Spirit of God, whereby uh, you are sealed into the day of redemption. And now, hey, I'm going to back up what, what's going to uh, hinder, what's going to grieve the Spirit. And you back up to verse number 29 again. He said, let no corrupt communication uh, proceed out of your mouth. Brother, I'll tell you the way we talk, the way we handle our tongue, the way we uh, talk to people and interact with people, uh, it can it can hinder uh, the Spirit of God. I'll tell you, I've, I've worked with them and I know you have too. Uh, down through time, you work 
with people. Uh, you've been around neighbors. You've been around people. Uh, they'll cuss like a sailor every single day. Uh, they'll tell nasty jokes. They'll do all those things. And then come into church and praise God uh, like they're going to fly away. I'm going to tell you something, ain't my friend. Uh, bitter water and sweet water don't come out of the oh same fountain. Uh, you say, I've had them tell me, preacher, I'm sorry uh, that you slipped out. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. That's just a backward word. I didn't mean to say that, preacher. It slipped out. I want to tell you something, brother. If it ain't in your heart, it ain't going to come out of your mouth. Hey, man. I mean, we've got too many proof of, uh, people out there today uh, that thought they want to live like the world when they're in the world and like the church when they're at the church house. And I, uh, brother, I'll tell you that grieves the Spirit of God. Uh, you can't talk like the world and then talk for the Lord, too. If I got out here tonight and, brother, I, I talked every which way, uh, you think the Lord would help me to preach? I'll guarantee you. Uh, you think I'd get behind this pulpit and preach if I done that? I wouldn't do it tonight. Amen. Paul confronted a preacher about that one time. And the way he was talking and the way he was acting. A great preacher in the Bible, the Apostle Peter. And the Bible said that Paul withstood him to the face. In other words, and I, I'm going to get this here too. A lot of times today, We've got preachers that ain't got enough backbone to do this. They will want to run and they will want to talk to everybody else but the person they've got the problem with. I don't know why. You may, uh, some of you YouTube preachers might need to hear this. Uh, but brother, you'll go out there and you'll talk about people, uh, but you won't do it to the face. Paul uh, withstood him to the face, and he told him, he said, now, and, and I'm using my words, he said, but Peter, uh, when you're with the Gentiles, you're acting like the Gentile. And when you're with the, the Greek, uh, the church, you're acting like them. And he said, you can't do that. Uh, you're killing your testimony. Yeah. Brother, I'll tell you, I've said things that I shouldn't have said. Since I've been preaching, I've done that. I've said things in the wrong tone, in the wrong attitude, and in the wrong spirit. And brother, I've paid the price for it. But then he goes on. He don't stop there. And he said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but... That which is good to the use of edifying. Now, do you know what edifying is? Edifying means to uplift and to build up. So what he's saying is, uh, don't let anything come out of your voice. He didn't say, no, uh, don't let every, anything come out of your mouth at church. Amen. Now, listen, he didn't say, uh, just don't do this at church. He said, don't let not none of it, never. No corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, building up. We've got a lot of people that not concerned anymore. I'll just put it that way. We've got people that that desire to come to church ain't there anymore. Everything else is important when it comes time for church. But what good's it going to do them yep. if I go to them and I put my foot on their neck and hold them down while I'm trying to pull them up? Yep. It ain't going to do no good. Amen. So I, and the, the words that come out of my mouth, the words that come out of your mouth has got to be to edify, yep. to uplift, to lift them up, to build them up, to encourage them. And I'll tell you, we need, if there's ever been a time in our church world that we need encouragement it's the day that we live in hey listen I said this not long ago too uh, the times that we're living in I know they're hard inflation is a way of uh, wages are right where they are everything has got out of control our government's crazy uh, and I just put it that way they went plumb haywire uh, but brother, I, 40 years ago Mount Island Baptist Church would have been full if the world events were happening people would have been flocking to the house of God. Yep. What's wrong, preacher? We've got too many out there that's discouraging people yep. instead yep. of encouraging them. Yep. I promise you, I say this a lot, but I mean it. You read the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them, I broke. I broke every one of those. 
I'm not that much. So why are you saying that, preacher? I can't look down on nobody. Amen. Jesus came to seek and to save a rocky ball that was lost and undone. And on my way to hell. And I'm thankful. I was an old man of God that loved me and encouraged me. He came to me, and I've told this many times. He came to me and he put his arm around me. I've been out there, I've been out all night. And I smelt like a brewery. And he pulled me close to him and he said, I love you. Jesus loves you. And he wants to help you. And he said, I want better for you. Jesus wants better for you. And I'll tell you, that pricked my heart. That stood with me. And I, I'm glad that somebody will have some encouraging words for me. I promise you. And if anybody had a right, he could have. I clocked in on his dollar. He was the one paying me uh, to work for him that day. He could have told me, you go to the house and don't come back like this ever again. Or you'll know you won't have a job. But he loved me. Everybody else was discouraging me. Had people in my own family say that that Rocky will never amount to nothing. He ain't nothing but a drunk. He ain't nothing but a dope head. And I, I was. They were right. I worked every day. Never missed a day of work because of it. I was still a drunk and I was a dope head. They said by the time he's 40 years old, he'll either be dead, he'll be in prison, or we'll see him walking up and down the, the highways picking up cans to buy him another shot. That's how people looked at me. And they just they, would, they tried to discourage me. I'm thankful there was a man Amen. that loved me. Amen. I'm thankful there's a church that didn't give up on me. Right. They seen past that and they they seen Jesus on the cross. Yeah. And they seen him dying for that boy. And, they, and you know what? I've said this. But you know what? I, I believe with all my heart when Jesus was on the cross, he knew what I was doing. But he said he's worth it. He's worth it. Heard if he was worth it. Somebody loved me. Somebody wanted to build me up. You know what would have happened if that man hadn't have, I, I'm not trying to dig up things or anything like that. But I'd have probably still been in that condition if the Lord hadn't sent somebody to me. That person that you think is so far away from the Lord, there's no hope for it. They ain't never going to be nothing but a dope head. Jesus died for them. They're worth it for him. You're worth it. Thank you, Lord. That it may minister grace. Thank God for his amazing grace. Amen. And to the hearers. I'll tell you, church, I don't want to hinder his spirit. I don't want to grieve his spirit. He said, let all bitterness. You know what bitterness is? Sorrow. I thought about these folks that's got this poor, pitiful me attitude. And I've had it myself. Woe is me. Don't do that. You're worth it. Amen. Amen. Don't do that. Don't grieve your spirit. I'll tell you, I truly believe this. And God opened this up to me like this this week. I believe it really hurts. Now, I, I believe this too. I'm going to get into a little bit of doctrine tonight. I can't get away from it. I believe in that Holy Trinity too. I believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I believe they're all one and they're all different. They're all working together. Amen. I believe it now. And that Holy Ghost, God the Holy Ghost, I believe when we do these things, it hurts Him. I believe it makes it sad. We, you say, preacher, how can the Holy Ghost be sad? How can Jesus be sad? I can read where Jesus wept. 
I can read where uh, Jesus was, uh, brother, he had emotions and he had feeling. Uh, and brother, he cared or he wanted to come. Don't be sorrowful. Don't be bitter. I mentioned it not long ago or two. When Ruth, in the book of Ruth, when Naomi had left Bethlehem, Judah, and she went out into the land of Moab with her family. And because they had heard that the Lord had visited with bread, there's a great famine in the land. And we read on over at the end of chapter 1. And Naomi had made this statement. She said, I went out full. I'm coming back empty. Mm -hmm. And she was bitter. She even changed her name. She said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Because I'm bitter. That bitterness had come in. Don't do that today. And when we start getting away, when we start the evil communication, when we start all these things, and I'm going to read through this. I don't know how long I'm going to preach tonight. I'm going to preach the Lord says, uh, but brother, I'll tell you, when we do that, it, it, it may bring sorrow on our life. And it grieves yes. the Holy Spirit of God. Yes. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger. Wrath is sort of like anger on steroids. It's rage. And I almost want to say this too. Before I got saved, I had a lot of rage. I wanted to fight every single day. I had a lot of anger. But I had the type of anger that turned into rage and turned into wrath. And I'm thankful that when I got saved, the Lord took that away from me. I know that that's not something that keeps pulling me back. God done away with that for me, and I'm thankful that He did. But I never will forget when I prayed and I asked God to save me, and I, I got born again by His Spirit. I don't know the words I said that night. I can't tell you what, three words that I said that night. I know in my heart that I was lost. And I, and I know at some point I did say, save me. And I know what the Word of God said, but I, I'll tell you, there was a joy that I never felt in my life. It came in and it took over. And I, I'll tell you that. And you'll see me when somebody comes to this altar. I'll, I'll talk to them a little bit. And I'll question them just a little bit too. But the preacher had asked me, he said, Son, he said, how do you know that you've been saved? And all I can say is, I love everybody. I'm telling you that until 30 minutes before that, they was men that I would have killed out of anger. And I'd have hugged their neck and told them I loved them. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus changed me. And he made me a new creature. And he said in clamor, now you've seen people like this too. And all that is is somebody that's crying out, looking for attention. That's what the King James Version Bible, Hebrew, and the Greek Dictionary give you for that word. You can look at the Webster's Dictionary and it'll give you pretty much the same thing. But I'm going to stick with the King James. Yeah. And brother, it's an outcry for attention. And you've seen people that uh, that's all they want. Look at me and, and do things to get attention. They uh, say things that get attention. I'll tell you, I don't want any attention in this world. I want Jesus to get the attention. Amen. When you think of me, I want your mind to immediately go to Jesus. I'm nothing. I was nothing when I got saved and I'm nothing now. But Jesus is everything. Amen. And then we're going to get that again. And he said, and evil speaking. Brother, I'm going to tell you, foul language will grieve yes, the Spirit of God. And we got a lot of people doing it. And he said, be put away from me with all malice. Yes. The word malice, it means to have the intent to do evil. To know and to plan out sin. Yeah. Put it in our language. Amen. 
You're planning on sin. I leave here tonight, and I plan on going back to the bar. That's malice. Mm -hmm. On top of the sin itself, that's malice. And brother, I'll tell you, he said, put all of these things away from you. Why, preacher? Why do I have to do that? I like having a pity party. I like doing things for attention. I like uh, telling nasty jokes. I like doing all this. And I actually had a man tell me one time. He said, I, I would love to come to church and I'd love to start coming to church. And I, and I even want to get saved one day, but I don't want to quit cussing. And I said, so you mean to tell me that a four-letter word is going to keep you from coming to church that's going to send you to hell you're, that's going to keep you from accepting Christ Jesus because you want to curse. Now how silly is that? Put it away. It grieves the Holy Spirit of God. Well, what are we supposed to do, preacher? How are we supposed to act? And I'm going to say it like this. I want to word this carefully tonight and I'm coming to a close. What I'm about to read to you is easy to do on Thursday night. It's easy to do on Sunday morning mm -hmm. and Sunday night. But let's do this in the morning when we wake up. When we get home tonight, let's do this. Let's do this every single day and see how much more power of God we've got. And be ye kind one to another. Tenderhearted. Forgiving one another. There's folks that's done me wrong. There's folks that's done you wrong. Guarantee you somebody's done you wrong in your life. He says forgive them. Even as God, for Christ's sake, had forgiven you. I thought about it. the perfect example for that verse number 32. There was a woman in the Bible the Bible said that she was caught in the very act of adultery. This woman, they didn't say, I heard she was down there sleeping around. It wasn't, I heard this woman's cheating on her husband. She was caught in the very act of adultery. She was, and I'm just going to be blunt. She was caught in the bed with a man that wasn't her husband. And they brought this woman in front of Jesus and said, Lord, Moses said that we're to stone this woman. We've caught her in the very act of adultery. And Jesus stooped down and he began to write on the ground with his finger. And he said, he that's without sin, let him cast the first stone. <clears throat> he kept right. Each one of those men that brought her out there and was accusing her, was looking down on her, started to leave. One at a time, they started walking off. Before you know it, Jesus is there and he's writing on the ground. And that woman standing right before her, in front of her. And Jesus gets there and he says, Woman, where are those nine accusers? Where are they at? And listen close. This is being kind. This is being tender hearted and loving. And this is forgiving one another. She said, Lord, I, I have none but you. The sweetest words I've ever heard in my life. He said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Thank you. The only one that had a right to condemn said, go and sin no more. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to be tender hearted. I'm going to show mercy. Let's not, let's not grieve the Spirit of God. Let's do, I don't know tonight why God would not let me get away from that, but I'm so glad that he did. Yeah. What I feel in my heart. Yeah. He's helped me tonight. He's strengthened me tonight. And I'm thankful 
I'm not that old man. Yeah. I'm a new man. I'm a new creature. You're a new woman. You're a new man. We're all new creatures if we've been born again and saved by God's grace. Let's everybody stand.